fiery horse for the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. During the years of unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors. And for once, his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're on the tail of the Black Arrow. Oh, Silver. Hey! After his attempt to kill the Lone Ranger and Tonto, Jebediah Leach tried to make his getaway across the Badlands. Desperately, he spurred his mount, but the sound of the pursuit drew closer and closer. And as the trail disappeared and the ground became rocky and broken, he knew that escape was impossible. He tried to rein up, and only then did he realize that his bronco had taken the bit in his teeth and was running away. Oh, look, you maverick. You kill us both. Oh, steady, boy. Steady. Oh, it's no use. All I gotta do is hang on and hope he doesn't break a leg. Serves me right. Try to kill him, I'm gonna break my own neck. Oh, They're right behind me. My only chance is for them to catch up and stop this cayuse before it. Help! Hang on, Leach. Stop the range and pull the leg. Get him up, scout the other side, Connell. Let him swing away from me. You grab range. Faster, Silver, faster. I can't hold on much longer. Steady, boy, steady. Oh, we're coming to the edge of a ravine. Stop him. Brace yourself, Silver. Steady, boy. Steady, Silver. Now back, big fella, back. A good boy, Silver. Stopped him right at the edge. There's a 30-foot drop there. He'd have gone right over. Well, Leach, this is the second time tonight you've asked for help. I meant it this time. Are you going to try and kill us again? No, mass man. I'm grateful. You can turn me over to the sheriff. I won't make any more trouble. We found that blasting powder back there in the cabin. You said this was only the beginning. I'm through. Who are you working for? Nobody. That isn't true. Mass man, I... I broke out of jail six months ago. I took this job to keep from going back. I failed, and I'm glad I failed. You can send me back where I belong, but I still want to live. You mean the man who hired you will see that you're killed if you talk? I'm sure of it. How much longer did you have to serve? Three years. It'll be 23 now. 23? You tried to commit murder. There's only one way you can get off with a lighter sentence. And that's by telling us who hired you. I wasn't hired. Who forced you then? But if I do, if I mention his name... We'll promise that no one will kill you. What good will it do? It's only my word against his. He'll deny it. What's more, the jury will believe him and not me. I'm a jailbird. I got a record. You can leave the matter of proof to us. No, it's no use. I'll make another promise, Leach. We won't turn you over to the law until we have our proof against the other man. You mean that? You have my word. 
Well, that's good enough for most people out here in the West. I guess it's good enough for me. Well? You'll have to travel beyond the pass to find him. He's in Riverdale. His name? It's... It's Andrew Thompson. Andy Thompson? Kimosabe, him government agent. You know him? I know he was sent out from Washington about three months ago. He has charge of the land office, and he collects the taxes for the whole district. Yeah, that's right. And it was Andy Thompson who blackmailed you? you see, I told you it wasn't any use. You don't even believe me yourself. We'll investigate your story, Leach. You're riding with us to Riverdale. No, if he sees he me... He won't. Get your horse around. Now, come on. Get him up, Scout. Get The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Leach skirted the Badlands to the south. They made camp the next night in the foothills, and the following day it took them through the pass in spite of the difficulties of the trail. There was no camp made that night. The moon was full, and the trail led straight across the level plain. The night faded into morning. The sun rose, and an hour later, Leach began to recognize landmarks. You'll see the river when we get to the top of the next rise. The town's just beyond it. To the left, into the woods. Get up, boy. We may camp here. Yes, Tonto. They're clearing up ahead. Never do. It get light plenty soon. You wait till dark while you go to town? No, Kimosabe. You can help me with a disguise. We can't waste any time. Oh, boy. Oh, steady, Silver, steady. You stay here with Tonto until I get back, Leech. After that, we'll plan our first move. At 10 o'clock that morning, Sally Leonard, pretty, spirited, and just 18, was arguing with a tax collector in the land office. The door opened, and a stranger walked in. But in the heat of the discussion, the girl paid no attention to him. I tell you, Mr. Thompson, we paid our taxes to a man named Leach over a month ago. Now, pardon me. Uh, be with you in a minute, stranger. Well, Leach never brought the money here, Sally. You admit you hired him to do the collecting. Of course I admit it. Well, where is he? Just let him deny we paid it, that's all. You aren't the only one who's been in here with a complaint. Must be 20 Leach got money from. Well, where is he? I don't know. Don't you understand, Sally? I believe you're telling the truth. But there's no record in this office to show you paid your taxes. And unless we can find Leach and get the money out of him, you'll just have to pay him again. We can't. Then your ranch has got to be sold at public auction to the highest bidder. Oh, it, it ain't fair, Mr. Thompson. I'm not saying it is. But that's the law. You only got another week. Can't you and your paw raise the money someplace? I don't see how. There's a chance we'll get it back for you later on when they find Leach. It wouldn't be for long. Bank won't lend us any. Pa tried to borrow for improvements about two months ago. Well, uh, this is private business. You just wait around a while, I'll talk to you some more later on. What can I do for you, stranger? I'm in no hurry. You must have heard what I just said to the girl. We aren't going to talk anymore till we're alone. Well, perhaps I shouldn't have come in here. The sheriff wasn't in his office, and after all, you are a government agent. What's that? Do you know of any outlaws around here? Outlaws? There are three men camped out in the woods on the other side of the river. One of them's an Indian. One of the men wears a mask. An Indian and a mask man. What's the third one like? A man with a scar on his forehead. Leaping cactus. I thought the sheriff should be told. You're right, stranger. He's out at the Miller Ranch. I'll get hold of him right away. But, Mr. Thompson, about our taxes. You aren't going to forget him, are you? Forget him? I should smile. This hombre said a man with a scar on his forehead. Who's that sound like to you? You mean Leech? I sure do. But who's the masked man and the Indian? Outlaws. They must be. We gotta round up the three of them. <laughs> When Thompson started for the Miller Ranch to get the sheriff, the Lone Ranger walked to the edge of town where he had left Silver in a grove of cottonwoods. He avoided the bridge and used the ford to cross the river. On the far side, he stopped for a moment to adjust his mask. Then he headed straight for the camp in the forest. Tonto and Leach were on their feet at the sound of approaching hoofbeats, and the Indian greeted him. Aye, Kimasabi. Aye, steady, Silver. Leach, you never mentioned that Thompson hired you to collect taxes for him. Well, no. I got that job before he found out about me. How long did you work at it? Oh, I started just after he got to Riverdale. I didn't quit until two weeks ago when he sent me after you. Do you know a girl about 18 called Sally? Dark brown hair, rides a sorrel pony. Well, that'd be Sally Leonard. Well, she was in Thompson's office when I got there. Her father paid their taxes to you, but uh, Thompson says he never received them at the office. Well, that ain't so. He did. Well, I remember the day I brought him in. I wish I knew, Leach. Knew what? Which of you is telling the truth? It's certain I'll never find out if you're put in jail. Mister, I swear I never stole any money. On the other hand, Washington wouldn't send a crook out here to handle the land office. You've got to believe me. I'll decide about that later. 
Toto. Uh -huh. We're breaking camp. The sheriff will be here with a posse any minute now. Uh -huh. Time to get things ready. You aren't going to leave me behind, are you? Yeah, not yet, Leach. Single Tommy, men right this way now. Thompson didn't waste any time. My horse is all saddled. Not up. You'll have to hurry, Toto. Uh -huh. Toto ready. Then through the woods and beyond the ridge. Come on, Silver. Get him up there. Toto, get him. That night, Sally Leonard and her father were alone in the living room of their ranch house. The girl had not stayed in town until the posse had returned, and both she and Dan were anxiously awaiting the return of the cowboy they had sent to get the news. But when a rider reined up out in front, it was not he that Sally saw from the window. Pa? What is it, Sally? Mr. Thompson. Now we'll find out if they caught Leach. Doors unlocked. Come on in. Howdy, folks. Did you get him, Andy? Uh, no such luck, Dan. We found their camp, but they cleared out. Uh, too bad. If I ever lay hands on that skunk, I... Sure, if he's still looking. Leech, he sure got a good name. Well, you folks got my sympathy. I want to do something about it. All I can, anyway. You mean, uh, give us more time to meet the taxes? Well, that'd be simple. But it just isn't possible, Dan. Nope, they gotta be paid by next Monday. Mm, less than a week. I was figuring that maybe... Maybe I can let you have a loan. You? Oh, Mr. Thompson. Well, if I hadn't trusted Leach, you wouldn't be in this fix. Let's see, uh, $300, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I could spare it for 30 days. You could give me a note with a ranch of security. Well, that'd be fine. A month's all the time I need. You'd have to sell some cattle, Paul. One of it. We can get a herd to market in a month. If you mean this, Andy, it's a deal. You drop around to my office tomorrow morning. We'll get the paper signed. I call that right friendly. Of course, it don't make me feel too good to have to pay my taxes twice, but... Then... Who is that? Sounded pretty close to the house. There's... Yeah, there's a white horse cutting across the prairie. What a beauty. It's that mask man Leech is hanging out with. How do you know? You can't see if he's got a mask on from here. I got a hunch, that's all. And the way he carries himself, I'd guess it was that stranger. Maybe so. He can't be two people. Well, the sheriff's got to know about this pronto. Want me to come with you? No need for that. See you in town tomorrow, Dan. He know. After Andy Thompson, Dan Leonard and his daughter had seen the Lone Ranger, the masked man headed east for the river. This time he wasted no time in the ford, but raced across the bridge, counting on Silver's speed in case he was seen. The great horse swept into the forest, on and on through the trees, until at last the masked man reined up in the new camp beyond the ridge. Howdy, masked man. Where's Tonto Leach? Left camp about 15 minutes ago. He left you here alone? That's right, and I'm still here. Doesn't that prove I'm playing the game with you, masked man? But I don't understand. Why should Tonto leave? What happened? Well, we were sitting here by the campfire, and all of a sudden he jumped to his feet. Said he heard a danger signal. Did you hear anything? Nothing but a bird call. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, it was just like that. Was it you? No, but Tonto may have thought it was. I see that he didn't take Scout. Well, the call sounded awful close, not more than a couple hundred feet away. It may have been a trap. You going after him? Yes. Tiny! That's him, ain't it? Tonto! Uh-huh. Tonto, come back. Leach told me about the signal, Kimosabe. You followed it? Not right. Me find track a horse out there. Bird call, sound further on. Tonto not stop. Someone was trying to lead you away from the camp. Ah, uh, lead Tonto maybe half mile, that way. And then what? And lead me to clearing. Their note on tree. A note? Where is it? Here. Tonto come back here to get scout. Maybe follow trail. You want me to do that? No, Kimosabe. The note was written by a friend. You sure? It's in the same handwriting as the one that warned us about Leech. Uh, can I have a look at it, masked man? Yes, here. Do you recognize the handwriting? No. Awful neat and small. Did you see a girl around that cabin where you tried to kill us? A girl? I'm sure a girl wrote that note. Golly. Do you see what it says? Yes, Leech. Be sure to follow Thompson the next time he leaves town. We're going to follow instructions, Tonto. But that ain't all. Yes, I know. A murder has been committed. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. On the morning after the Lone Ranger received the note from the girl, Dan Leonard and Sally rode into town bright and early. As they reined up in front of the land office... Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. There's nobody up and around yet, Sally. Is the office locked? Looks to be. You should have waited another hour. Folks don't get up at daybreak when they live in town. Well, you can't blame me for wanting to get this tax business settled. And I wanted to find out about that man on the white horse, too. Wonder if the posse picked up his trail last night. I still say it was a stranger. His shoulders were so broad, and he sat up so straight. You couldn't help remembering. Miss Sally. What, Paul? There's a piece of paper tacked up on the door. Might be a notice. Yeah. There might be a message for us. I'm taking a look. Hmm. Warning. The masked man's found where he's buried. What? What's the matter, Paul? Sally, you know where Thompson lives? It's down at the end of the street. That's where we're going. Get up there. Get up there. Get along now. You sure this is it? Yeah. The Turners used to live in this cabin. Mr. Thompson rented it when he came to town. <coughs> You wait here. I don't see why you can't tell me what it's all about, Paul. I don't know what it's about. This note mentions the mask, man. Wake up, Thompson. Wake up. What's going on here? Oh, I thought you were still asleep. Just out in the kitchen making me some coffee. You're kind of early, aren't you? I guess you didn't catch up with that hombre on the white horse last night. Nope. You and Sally want to... figure th- not. He must have been up to more of his crooked work. Huh? Just read this. Where'd it come from, Dan? Where'd you find it? Well, it was stacked on the front door of your office. Yeah? No name signed or anything. And that arrow at the bottom, what does that mean? Nothing. It's private business. You want me to get the sheriff? No, I'll tell you it's private. Uh, just do me a favor, Dan, and don't say nothing about it. I'll take care of your business when I get back. When you get back? Yeah. I'm leaving town for a few hours. I'll be back by noon. Ten minutes later, Andy Thompson was in the saddle and racing out of town for the east. The Lone Ranger, Leach, and Tonto watched him from the ridge to the north of Riverdale. Then, when the government agent had crossed the bridge and disappeared from sight on the far side of the river, they started after him. It was up to Tonto to follow his trail. Get him out! Come. Get up there, boy! Come on, Silver! Ten miles from town, it cut away from the main trail toward the south. Here the country was rough, and the Indian found it harder to read the signs Thompson left behind him. At last, he raised his arm in a signal to stop. Steady, Silver. Oh, oh. What's the matter, Kimosabe? You haven't lost it, have you? No. Him ride that way into valley. Yes? You look. Valley not big. A rim rock on three sides. He can't get any farther, you mean? That's right. You want to look down in valley, ride that way. Along the edge of the rim rock. And keep back from edge so him not see. You hear, Leech? Be careful. Don't worry. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Horses behind these rocks. That good. I'll give the word to get down, Leach. We'll have to crawl the last few feet to the edge. We ain't so far away now. Uh-huh. I keep wondering, who is this girl that wrote the note? All we know is that she's helped us before. Down. Uh-huh. There's some bushes here. We can look through them. Uh-huh. That good. Well, we'll see what Thompson is up to. What a drop. Must be 500 feet. There he is. Ah. Near that pile of stones. That pile of stones didn't just happen. It's too neat. Do you remember the last line in the note? Yeah. A murder. Yes, Leach. We'll have to wait until Thompson leaves. Then we'll get a closer look at those stones. For nearly half an hour, the lone ranger and his two companions watched the tiny figure of the tax collector in the valley below. He left the pile of stones to examine every bit of soft ground near it. But at last he mounted once more and rode up the trail and out of the valley. Not until then did the masked man give the signal to return to their horses. They rode carefully, watchful for any sign of Thompson. 
It was afternoon when they dismounted by the neat pile of stones. <coughs> There's no doubt about it, masked man. Yes, no doubt about it. It's a grave. Who buried there? I have an idea, Tonto. Silver and I have a long ride ahead of us before we can make sure. Kim was happy. There Thompson up there. Him come back. Him shoot. If he tries it again, I'm going to pretend to be hit. If we stay here, you won't have to pretend. Oh! Kim was happy. It's all right. Shake your fist at him. You killer! Now get on your horses and go after him. Chase him back to town and then wait for me at our camp. What you do? I didn't think I'm dead. Now hurry. <laughs> get him up. Get up there, boy. Tonto and Leach followed the Lone Ranger's instructions. They kept Thompson in sight until he rode across the bridge and into town. Then they returned to camp. The Lone Ranger did not appear that night. One day passed. Two, three. Still, there was no sign of him, and Leach was unable to control his nerve. I don't like it, Tonto. I think we ought to do something. Uh-huh. We've been waiting here for three days, and what's happened? Nothing. Oh, um, mask friend, tell us, wait here. Yeah. The sheriff and his posse have been out day and night. It's only a matter of time before they stumble on this hideout, and then what happens? Oh, don't to wait here. They put us both in jail. I may even get up a lynching party. Lone Ranger got plans. Yeah, I say we ought to clear out and try to find him. He might be in trouble. He might need our help. What the... Up with your hands in the name of the law. I told you, Tonto, they got us. Close in, boys. Rope them good and take them back to town. All right, All right, All right, 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 Stand back there, men. Stand back from the prisoners. I'm putting them in jail. The boys want to handle each themselves, Sheriff. Yeah. He's getting a trial, same as the Indian. Andy Thompson put a bullet through the mask, man. That's what these two ought to get. Yeah. Stand yeah. back, I say. Wait, I got a suggestion, Sheriff. Maybe if Leach was to admit he stole these folks' money and hand it over, they might calm down, sir. I never stole any money. You gonna deny I paid you for my taxes? No, Dan. But I gave it to Thompson. If anybody stole it, he did. You can't make us believe that. Will you listen to me? Will you let me tell you what happened? You'd better make it good. Well, I broke out of jail about six months ago back in St. Louis. Oh, no, wait, wait. Thompson found out about it, and he said he'd turn me over to the sheriff unless I followed his order. He's just talking to save his neck. You know what he wanted me to do? He wanted me to kill the Lone Ranger. Oh, uh, that's a lie. And I tried it, and I got caught. The masked man believed me when I told him about Thompson, and he came here with me, him and Tarno. Are you calling that masked man we've been seeing around here, the Lone Ranger? I sure am. And this is Tarno. That's enough. Yeah. The Lone Ranger don't hang out with crooks like you, and I sure sympathize with the boys. If I didn't have my duty to That's think of... That's enough, Palaver. Up with him, Sheriff. What's that? You're covered. Turn those prisoners over to us. Yeah. Are you forgetting you're a government agent, Thompson? Maybe. I guess most of the folks around here can forget it, too. What I want is justice. And Leach deserves a lot more than a few years in jail. Why, every honest rancher that's paid him taxes stands to lose his ranch. There's only one way to treat polecats like him. You're right. right. Grab You're the right. sheriff, boy, so he can't interfere. Yeah, no, no, you can't. Don't just argue, Please, Sheriff. Andy, I'm not so sure about this. Don't go soft, understand? Get those two armies and their horses. String a couple of ropes over the big branch of that cottonwood. Tonto. Uh, Tonto here. How about you, Thompson? You thought you killed the masked man, but you didn't. What's this? Here he comes. And that silver he's riding. Now you'll find out if he's a Lone Ranger or not. Stand back, everybody. He's nothing but an outlaw. And this time... No, I'm... you not shoot him. I'll show you. Oh. How's that for proof? Shut the gun right out of his hand. My oh. hand. You aren't hurt. I'm not interested in your right hand. I see your left. There you are, Marshal. Blake Hero. Bill Desmond, what are you doing here? The mass man brought me. This is government business. Is he really the Lone Ranger? He sure is. Do your duty, Marshal. Right. Thompson, whatever your name is... You're under arrest for murder. For murder? You got nothing against me. That black arrow tattooed on your wrist is enough. Yeah, we can jail you for that alone. You'll have to prove it means anything. But the charge is murder. I don't get it, Marshal. There hasn't been any murder around here. You're wrong, Sheriff. I can show you a grave about 15 miles east of here, near the foot of the rim rock. I don't know how the masked man found it, but Thompson he did. Thompson let us there. That's right. We just followed him. But the man who was buried there was shot in the back. And that man was Andrew Thompson. No, hold on. This man is an imposter. He killed Thompson, took all his papers, and came here to take charge of the land office. I told you he was a crook. He's the one who stole your money. Hey, hey, the the Stay there, boys. He hasn't had a chance to get rid of it. 
You'll find it all in his office or his home. Masked man, can you explain this? If he stole my money, why should he lend me some? Why shouldn't he? He was only lending your own money back, and you were putting up your ranch as security. Things had worked out the way he hoped. He might have owned 20 ranches in the valley before the summer was over. Why, the girl? Don't worry, don't worry, Dan. He'll get what he deserves. Why didn't you tell me who you were right off, mass man? I'd have arrested this hombre for you. I had to find someone who knew the real Andrew Thompson, Sheriff. And there's another angle to this case the Marshal and I can't discuss. Well, like he said, government business. Yes. We'll still win. You won't have a hand in it. Move along. All right, come on, sir. Kimasabi. Harry Indian, on the edge of the crowd. Him signal me. Find out what he wants, Kimasabi. Ah, you do it. What about me, masked man? You'll have to go back and finish out your sentence, Leach. Is, is that all? I don't know of any other charge against you. You, you aren't going to tell him about no, it? No, no, Leach. I have an idea that when you get out of jail, you'll start a new life. I will if I get a chance. You have it. Kimosabe. What, Hanno? That Indian bring note from Brentwood. Not from the girl? Ah, uh, you read. Gosh, if it hadn't been for her... Wait, Hanno, get mounted. Uh, Count already. What's up? The note doesn't say much. Hip. You're leaving? We need it in Brentwood, and we've got to hurry. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Well, Silver! Hurry! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.